Hello everyone and welcome to another Rise of Kingdoms video. This is Dragothian here and today we're going to be talking about the Garrison Talent Tree. I wanted everybody to have an updated version of this because a lot of us are going into KVK. Osiris League is coming up sometime next month. I want to make sure that we have all the updated information so that you can create the most specific Garrison Talent builds for your purposes. There's tons of reasons why you want to have the garrison tree in your mind and understanding it because there's so many different functions of it. You've got different game modes, you've got different play styles. I want to make sure you guys know what each one of these bubbles do so that you can make sure that you have the best setup that you need to be successful and win in those different encounters. So first what we're going to do is we're going to go over why you need to understand it. Second, we're going to go over all the bubbles and then I'm going to go ahead and build it with you so that you guys can see how I'm making my decisions so that you can do the same thing yourself. And just as a reminder, this is a sponsored content creation channel for Rise of Kingdoms. I hope you enjoy, and if you do want to see more of these things, hit the subscribe button, hit the bell notification so you see when these videos pop up, and you will be amazed and enjoy all that good stuff. So, let's jump right into it. Why use the garrison tree? You need the garrison tree to have a little bit extra effectiveness whenever you're garrisoning structures. And when I say structures, that includes your city, that includes structures on the KVK map or your own kingdom map like flags, passes, things like that. Also, when you're talking about the Lost Kingdom, you've also got the Ziggurat. When you want to keep that, if there is a fight in the middle of zone 5, 6, 7, whatever you're going to call it, you need to be able to maintain that structure and that's where a garrison would come into play. Any structure in those kingdoms will be benefited by having a proper garrison talent built. Also, You've got Ark of Osiris and Osiris League. Those are a different type of build because you don't necessarily need to have a watchtower bonus from the garrison tree, which you do get whenever you're in Ark of Osiris or Osiris League because there are no watchtowers in those structures. So you want to make sure that you maximize your points. That's the best way to do it, knowing what you're using and when you're using it. So let's jump in and let's start building. Of course, the first bubble always needs to be popped and then the second one on this one as well. Then that starts unfolding all the other bubbles. Let's go through these bubbles and, and I'll let you know what they mean and when you should use them. That's really gonna be, I think, the biggest benefit here. So the first two on the left and right here, when you come down, you want to have regardless because these are basically bonuses to damage dealt and reductions to damage taken regardless of structure. These work in all structures. So it says when serving as a garrison commander, damage taken and damage dealt is increased by 2% up to 6% on each one. So let's go ahead and bump both of those up. You wanna use at least this in every garrison build you've got. There's That's too good of a bonus to not have. Plus, to get to some of the other bubbles that you're going to want, you need to have them anyway. So make sure you get at least these two bubbles when you're garrisoning any structure, any encounter, any event, any reason why, okay? Then it starts getting more specialized. Now, I always, when we start at the top and we'll work our way down, impregnable, I always get impregnable. Reason being, there is so much skill damage in this game and rallies are very skill heavy. So a lot of folks are sending Saladin Genghis, Edward Tamiris. Very few uh, infantry only rallies are going out nowadays. And even if they are, Alex is usually a part of it, which also has a skill damage component. This is a huge need for a garrison commander to have. So I always get that 15% skill damage taken reduction is huge. You want this in your garrison 100%. This also applies to all different game modes. So you want to have impregnable at all times. So these are our big three that we start our foundation out with for every garrison talent tree that we have on any of our commanders, okay? Then it starts getting specialized. And now I'm going to start popping the bubbles and reading them to you and showing you what they are and discussing what they mean and why or why not should you use them. Okay. So the other two that are lit up, you've got Adamantine Walls and City Guardian. These apply to the Watchtower. Watchtowers are only found in cities. Okay. So this is only if you are garrisoning your own city is when these two bubbles will apply. If you're in Ark of Osiris, if you're garrisoning a pass, or a flag, or a structure in any type of kingdom, whether it's Lost Kingdom or your regular kingdom that's not your own city, these two talents do not apply because there is no watchtower to apply them to. So, 
With that in mind, I usually skip over these, not just because of their not, not being so universal with all the, the events and the, the different things that you should be doing in the game, but even so, the Watchtower tends to fall fairly quickly. Um, when you get rallied, that's the first thing that tends to get hit. So if you're getting rallied by somebody and you um, get burned where your city is on fire because you took the rally and your troops went all the way down to zero, your watchtower is gone at that point and it's no longer functioning. And really inside of that rally, you've probably lost it, maybe 20, 15 to 20% of that rally in. So that other 85%, you are not getting any bonuses from these two talents. So I usually recommend not getting these two unless you're going to go farther down the tree, which again, I do not recommend. So we're going to talk about that a little further as well. But if you're going to do it, that's what these two are for. And it does give you a 15% damage and defense buff to uh, attack and defense buff, excuse me, to your watchtower uh, itself. So again, if you if you have lost your watchtower, these buffs are irrelevant because they aren't causing damage because they're at zero. Now, the other bubble over here on the second layer here is nowhere to turn. And it's a rage regeneration talent. It's good to have. Basically, it gives you two up to six rage every time your city is attacked. Um, I haven't gotten confirmation on whether that includes counterattack, but I think it probably does. It doesn't specifically say normal attack. It just says attacked. So to me, that means that every single type of attack, and just keep in mind, guys, whenever you see a number floating above your city that's not skill damage, that's actually two attacks. That's a normal attack and a counter attack, okay? So that could be basically 12 rage every single time a, a, a number floats above your head. Same thing with if your city gets swarmed, this starts to escalate very quickly to almost turning into a rejuvenate type of skill where you're getting 50, 60, 100 rage per turn because you're getting so many attacks happening at the same time. Now, there are other flavors of this. So I'll, I'll show you on the Archer Tree, for instance. You've got Razor Sharp, where it grants an additional three rage after launching a normal attack. This is different than receiving an attack. So this one is every time you get attacked, you get that rage. Whereas Razor Sharp is every time you launch an attack, you get rage. So these two would stack up. So if you have a Archer Commander in combination with the Garrison, uh, build here, you could actually double stack that stuff up. Same thing with the infantry tree. There is a rage generation when you are attacked on the open field. That would also stack with this because it doesn't necessarily say you need to be outside of your city. It just says when your army is attacked, you get additional rage. So you want to look for those synergies where you can get extra rage because the faster the rage regeneration, the faster your skills are going to go off. And that's something you're going to want to have whenever you're talking about your garrison. So I do tend to go towards this as well, especially considering unless there's something I absolutely have to have on some of the other trees on the commander that I'm using, I like to have that extra rage regeneration. And honestly, as we start to go further down the garrison talent tree, I don't like a whole lot of what they're trying to provide you, especially considering what you're going to be doing garrisoning for. If you're the garrison commander, you should be um, maximizing all those talent points towards rage regeneration, skill damage, and tankiness, okay? which is basically what we've done this first layer. We've added skill damage reduction. We've added damage dealt and damage taken reduction. We've also added rage regeneration. Those are all good things that you want to have on your garrison, regardless of uh, event or um, type of mode of game that you're playing, whether it's ARC, whether it's KBK, whether it's inside your regular kingdom, any of that stuff, okay? Uh, even This will also even work in... Um, the expedition when you're doing the Ethelfled uh, games where you've got to take those rallies, you, this will also work. So something to think about. We just talked about the Watchtower ones. Let's go further down. Again, you're going to have all these little bubbles that provide stats. These are all, again, oddly enough, these are half percent stats. And there's also a March Speed one right there, which who needs a March Speed buff on a garrison commander? You're not marching anywhere. You're sitting tight in your city. But usually when we have these specialized... Um, uh, trees uh, for the talents where you've got they're only applicable to garrison they give you one percent instead of half percent but for the garrison they only give you half percent so that's very interesting um, that they do that versus say uh, the infantry tree or the archer tree or uh, cav tree or even um, I think the 
I want to say the um, conquering tree also provides a couple one percenters. But either way, um, these are just wait. These are just the bubbles you need to hit to get to these last three major bubbles, which we'll go over really quickly because generally I don't use these very often, especially considering how many points you need to sink in to get from this first layer here all the way towards the last two layers. Okay, so let's t start th the top and work our way all the way to the end here. Know thy enemy. We're going to read this together and we're going to understand it. So while this commander is serving as garrison commander, damage reduction effects are enhanced by 3% if the garrison is surrounded. That ups to 9%. Okay, so 9% damage reduction, 9% enhancement to damage reduction effects. There are commanders in the game that give you damage reduction effects. Okay, Alex, I believe, is one of them. Um, there's a couple other ones that do give you that bonus. But again, there's a, a lot of different pieces that need to be clicking for Know Thy Enemy to make sense. One of which is you need to be surrounded. So there needs to be at least two armies or one rally, one army hitting your city to give you that surrounded effect. Meaning you're taking a, 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 a reduction, I'm sorry, you're taking a, an additional damage bonus against you. So if you have more than one army, there's a surrounding bonus where it provides like a 0.1 or a 0.2% chance or or 0.2% uh, additional attack damage or whatever it is that you'll be taking extra damage because of a surrounded bonus. This this reduces that uh, bonus that your enemy gets. Um, but again, you've got to have a damage reduction effect for it to apply in the first place. So know that enemy to me is just a little bit too niche. You need to have very particular commanders doing very particular things and you need to be surrounded, which again, in a rally, unless you're talking about uh, Ark of Osiris, you generally don't get swarmed um, in KBK unless you're a very, very um, low player in the front line, which again, that go, go to my roles in KBK video. You'll want to see that. that will tell you exactly what um, you should be doing at your power level in KBK. So to me, this one is just, there's too many points to get to it. You got three here. You got two here, so that's five. You got two here, so that's seven. Two more here, so that's nine, plus the three here, so that's 12 points to get this. And again, those 12 points can get you Feral Nature on the skill tree. They can get you um, Venomous Sting, which provides a, uh, active skill damage bonuses to both your primary and secondary skill commanders, which is definitely very nice. You need those extra points to get to those top tiers on the other talent trees. To me, this is not worth giving those things up, okay? Now, the other one is Kingsguard, and this is the one that's very controversial because there were times where the description of this wasn't correct. So it says increases garrison attack, defense, and health by 1% up to 3% when maxed when this commander is serving as garrison commander. No effect when garrisoning cities. So when we read no effect when garrisoning cities, we thought that this only worked when you were working in a pass or when you're working in a flag or when you're working uh, in an Ark of Osiris to give you those extra bonuses. We've done some testing and this actually just doesn't work. <laughs> um, it doesn't apply the effects. So when we uh, were going through the battle logs, we never saw Kingsguard trigger ever. Um, and again, there was no difference between having Kingsguard and the damage that we were receiving and not having Kingsguard and the damage we were receiving. So that's how we tested it out. It just doesn't work. Um, now in the cities, I haven't tested it in the cities because it says no effect when garrisoning cities, but before, we were told that even though this, the description reads this way, it's supposed to work everywhere. Now, I don't know if they've tooled around with it to where it just doesn't work at all or it just doesn't register, but to me and what our testing has shown, it just doesn't work, period. And again, it's the same principle here. Three points here, two points here, two points here, two points here. It takes 13 points or 11 points, 12 points to get here um, in the first place. And again, I would much rather take those points and put them somewhere else, okay? And again, to get both of these, then you're talking about 24 points, and that's a lot of points uh, to get something that is, with Know Thy Enemy, very, very niche, very, very situational, and then Kingsguard, where we don't even think that it works. So that's 24 points for those two types of talents. I'm not a huge fan of that, especially from an efficiency standpoint, but also from, that just seems like a waste of points to me. And then finally, Divine Favor, when this, gar when this commander is serving as garrison commander, gives the garrison a 10% chance to receive a damage-absorbing shield, damage up to 500 when maxed, 
after being attacked. That's basically a little over a third of a Charles shield. So Charles gets, I believe, a 1200 damage factor shield. Same thing with uh, Alex as well. This would be at max 500. And you all know when you're using Charles or Alex, whenever they have their shield up, it only lasts one turn uh, and then it's gone anyway. Uh, and this is also a 10% chance skill. So this might, if everything works the way it's supposed to, one out of 10 turns should pop the, the skill, which is about the same frequency that a uh, Charles shield will pop. So that's interesting. And if you combine the Charles shield with um, the divine favor talent, that basically means you could possibly have one and a third shields popping every 10 seconds, which is nice. And this may pop more frequently than that. However, again, to get to this point, that's 24 skill points plus an additional five to have that. Now you're talking almost 30. You're at 29 skill points or talent points just to get to divine favor. Again, I would much rather make sure I've got clarity giving, um, you know, after using an active skill, increases skill damage by 6%. Uh, feral nature giving a 10% chance to give 100 rage. You need that. Rejuvenate. Uh, 60 rage whenever your skills are used. Uh, again, the, the rejuvenate on the support talent tree is even bigger than that. You want those skills. You want skills like Venomous Sting. You want uh, Razor Sharp, uh, Full Quiver for attack if you're doing full archers, that kind of thing. So you don't want um, you don't want to waste your points here. This here in front of you is really the most I would put into the garrison tree. And in fact, I would even eliminate nowhere to turn unless I absolutely did not have anywhere else to put my points. This is nice, nowhere to turn is nice, but it's not, not a must have. The must haves are impregnable, em empty fortress stratagem, and impenetrable fortifications. Those are my three big talents that you absolutely have to have. And if you want to do some more damage and, and take a little bit less damage at the beginning of a rally, using these watchtower ones are not a bad deal, but I really feel like those are only applicable when you've got a ton of troops in your city. The reason I say that is because the rally that's going to hit you is going to go away so fast if you have that many troops in your city. And this actually will make sense because you won't lose your watchtower as fast or at all in those situations. Whereas if you've got a million and a half troops and you've got a two million rally coming against you, that watchtower is going to go down so quick. These will not give you much benefit. But if you've got five million or six million troops inside of your building, and they're sending a two million rally, and you're getting single rallied, this might stay up long enough to really make sense to have it, and you'll cause more dead more quickly, which is very good for you and not so good for your enemy. So that's the way I would recommend setting it up. And again, this is really kind of up to you based on how many troops you've got in your city. Otherwise, I would ditch nowhere to turn, even though it's really nice. Unless I've got the extra points, I'm really not gonna have the extra points to put into it. So, But these are the must-haves. Impregnable, Empty Fortress Stratagem, and Impenetrable Fortifications. That's going to wrap it up here for the Garrison Talent Tree video. I hope you enjoyed. I hope you got a little bit of knowledge on what you should be doing, what the different um, builds and how to use them and when you should use them. The, this build applies to all game events and game modes. This is what I use personally in KVK as well as uh, for my own city as well as for arc so this is what i use for everything i hope you got what you needed uh this is dragothian here signing out i hope you guys all enjoyed cheers have a good one and take care